The sweet, sweet sounds of cake right here on the Tony Jones Show. Online at TonyJones.org, on Facebook at Facebook.com slash Tony Jones Show. Thank you all for checking in on the almighty Twitter tonight at Tony Jones in RI. If you're tuning in, you are tuned in to our live Thanksgiving Eve broadcast. And if you're catching the podcast, I want to thank you for tuning in. It's probably past Thanksgiving at this point, and you either either went out tonight and partied, you had some fun, or you didn't, and you dealed with just the most annoying dregs of society, i.e. your family, and I, I hope you had a good holiday. As we roll on into our second hour, we have DJ Psycho Eddie, we have George from ProvidenceNightOut.com in studio, and they are launching... Before I pick their brains, they are launching a new a new show slash podcast right here on RI Free Radio, and it'll be available in all the formats as we like to do. And I'm going to ask them what they have planned. Now, if you're catching the live show, we have actually not recorded anything yet, so it could be one of those typical projects where we talk about what it's going to be now, and then by the time you hear it, those are all complete lies. But uh, <laughs> tell us... Uh, we, we brainstormed the other day. Tell us a little bit about the project or the potential project. Well, we're going to start off with basically everyone's looking for something to do. And if they don't have the app on their phone, George's app, uh, My Night Out, uh, they need something to do. They get on the computer. They can listen to the, the podcast or our show, and they'll be able to hear restaurants. They'll be able to hear shows that are coming up. They'll be able to hear a lot of different uh, alternative places that they're not really used to going. Um, I, for one, I do not like uh, franchise restaurants. If it's even remotely <laughs> franchised, I don't like it. Uh, I will go to every mom and pop, uh, every local restaurant, local war. I am, I, I am well, a very large local war, but I am a local <laughs> war, and. Uh, I love catching shows. I, I love going to the venues. I like listening to the bands that aren't mass-produced, cookie-cutter. Oh, this one sounds like that one. No, I, I want to hear something original. I want to hear something unique. And that's where I'm striving for. Yep. Uh, I'm pretty sure George is trying. George, what do you think? Yeah, I think uh, you're right on the right track. Uh, if If you saw both of us, there's no... Uh no secret that we love to eat, um, and uh, we love to be entertained. So, drink I, too, by the way. Yeah, <laughs> drink. So, oh, cheers. Um, so, we're looking to like put a spotlight on uh, local bands. We'll play some local music in between our our chats. Uh, we'll feature some bands. We're hoping to bring in some uh, members of bands to talk about whatever upcoming shows they have on. Maybe get a chef in here now and then. Uh, but just put some spotlight on what's going on in our area. Um, and I think it would be a great kind of charge for the show. It's kind of what Eddie just talked about earlier, is that trying to get people just in the simple mindset of thinking, and there was a big convoluted math experiment at one point that was going around online of if you spend $100 in the community, mm -hmm. it equals X amount of jobs. But just trying to get people in the way of thinking of, Hey, uh, you know, and not that there's anything wrong with Applebee's or Denny's, you know, but instead of thinking about, hey, let's go to Applebee's tonight or let's go to TGI Fridays, let's check out uh, Greasy Joe's down the street. 
uh, well, there actually is a good formula. It's called the 350. And if you're That's, able uh, to happens to be uh, Eddie and I's weight, actually. Well, <laughs> Back in high school, maybe. <laughs> But 350 is if you could spend $50 at three locally owned businesses a year, you'd be pumping in millions and millions of dollars into our local economy. And Rhode Island does have some chains. You know, Greg's is a local chain. Um, uh, what's the other one there, Ed? On, uh, App- oh, not Applebee's, but Greg's. What's the other franchise? Cellos. Cellos. Those are locally owned companies. And, the, you know, they, their stores are based in Rhode Island. Their headquarters are in Rhode Island. And when we spend money at these locally owned businesses, you know, over 80% of that money stays in our state. Um, so that's the importance of uh, supporting these locally owned businesses and bands. And that kind of plays into what we have talked about on the show before and we were talking about off the air is that there's a large group of people that have left this state and there's a large group of people that are like me where – I mean, things have kind of gotten so bad that if my parents weren't getting a little bit older and their house is kind of paid off and they're not going to go anywhere, so chances are after I finish my degree, I would just bail out of this state. But the people that own these businesses, um, and we'll get to more talking about the local music aspect too, but the people normally that own these businesses actually live in the community, so it's not like, well, Applebee's is here and their corporate offices are down south. Uh, and you've got to have a couple million to start up a franchise. Especially where I am in Wickford, a lot of people live almost in walking distance of their small businesses. I think that's what's so great about Providence is the neighborhoods are so alive and all these little shops that are off the beaten path. Well, it's not just Providence. I mean, most of Rhode Island, you can go just about anywhere, and as long as you're not on Route 2, Route 5, the main thoroughfares, you can find some really great restaurants, really great places, really just... Anything to to get you away from the cookie cutter. Well, put it this way: this is not going to come as a shock to anybody in this room. <laughs> I like steak. Did you say steak? Steak, yes, steak. Well, the other night I went to a restaurant, which is literally a quarter mile up the street over here, and it is the only place to ever get my steak correct. <laughs> I have heard constantly. Now, I like my steak extremely rare. Ugh. Yes, That's gross. go ahead. Ooh, I know. But when I ordered my steak, I don't tell them extra rare. I tell them 45 seconds on each side. Oh, God. <laughs> and Just enough to get the fur That's off. Gross. Right? That's it. Just enough to sterilize That's the It's not outside. steak. That's a roadkill. <laughs> <laughs> but every time I go to one of these franchise restaurants, I hear... Sorry, sir. We cannot leave it that oh, rare. Womp, womp, womp. Well, you know what? If I'm paying $20, $30 for a steak and I can't have it the way I want it, I am not a happy camper. So, like I said, I went up the street and they got my steak exactly perfect. It is the first time in the state of Rhode Island that <laughs> anybody has been able to get this steak correct. That's uh, Aqualante's, by the way. Um you know, throw a little plug out for the local business. And uh, they've actually been doing so well, they are moving to a new location and expanding. That's great. But what I meant about Providence is, you, you know, you look at some of these communities around our state, and they have very vibrant neighborhoods. Um, and those businesses are supported by a lot of foot traffic. Um, if you go into Providence, there's a great, great uh little diner called Hudson Street Diner. You'd never know it because it's way off the beaten path. It's off Cranston Street, but it's back in the neighborhood. And it's in a former house, I believe. But that business is supported by probably a five-block radius. And um, I've been there a number of times, and it amazes me how many people come walking in for breakfast, for lunch. And those are the kind of businesses that... um, that are really off everyone else's radar, but they're worth the trip if you're coming out of West Warwick or Cranston. There was a place in Elmwood, Eddie, it might have been you that turned me on to it, where it was like almost going into the restaurant was like going into their living room, and they yeah. had like five or six tables set up, and probably one of the best meals I've had uh, in my life, which is funny because I ended up down there looking for the Liberty Elm Diner, which I frequented for breakfast on the weekends, but I didn't know had been shut down at the time, so I'm kind of driving around, found out the Liberty Elms clothes, and I found this place that was 
just one of the best breakfasts I've ever had, and it was almost uh, like someone's living room. Yeah, it, it is very possible to find a place, you know, a little mom and pop organization. Um, you know, I, I I preach this to everybody, uh, anyone who will listen to me. Um, try something different. Try something new. Go outside of your comfort zone. That's how you expand. That's incidentally uh, the same thing that Eddie says at uh, Fetish Night at Manchester 65. <laughs> <laughs> okay, only once or twice. <laughs> But, you know, if you expand your mind, you try something new, you, ex- you know, you might find some, your new favorite food. You might find your new favorite beverage, which I think I have. Um, oh, I know I have. Uh, definitely. I can see what I call blackout. <laughs> <laughs> I don't it's, think it's, it's from consuming it's it. I think it's strictly from apple juice. Taking in the vapors that are coming out. <laughs> <laughs> He's getting a contact buzz. <laughs> but... Yeah, I, I will try anything new, different, and exciting. Um, it doesn't Fetish even have to be night. exciting, but I will definitely try something new. So, so I'm going to put a little pressure on these guys in just a little bit because I want each of them to turn me on to something new. I kind of have a long weekend coming up, um, and I want them to tell me or give me their almost like an audio Yelp review. Except we shouldn't use that because George hates... George ha- George hates. We won't even say it's the the Y word, the word here word on the show. Yeah. But uh, before that, we're going to have a double shot of the Misfits, and we're going to have a double shot of the Misfits because uh, Misfits Records kind enough to send over a little care package with a bunch of their new releases, some Christmas music and stuff. So one of the bigger record labels in the United States, if not on the planet, in the punk scene, kind enough to send a package right over to our humble little. Rhode Island Free Radio Studios, that shows two things, that Misfits Records is with it, and it shows the power that alternative media and the stuff we're doing here is going to have over the next few years, and people are starting to kind of turn that way. But we're going to have a double shot of the Misfits from an album they put out with all 50s covers, and uh, the first one we're going to hear is this magic moment. You're tuned in to the Tony Jones Show. It's Thanksgiving Eve. And we're live. (laughs) 